Snow. Whoa. Norma. The sun is shining. The birds are chirping. Oh, yeah, it's Swole Text the fam. You like it? Sizzling. Hell, yeah. Welcome to the Daily Swole. Ooh, we liking it. Swole Texty. Testing, 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 test, 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 testing, testing, testicles, testing, testicles, test ickles, a test ickles, a test ickles. Oh, welcome everyone to episode 12 hundo and seven dish nine of the Daily Mother Swole, the most muscular swole cast, beer cast, broadcast, game cast, man cast, pimp cast, sleeves cast, and slay cast in the realm because we're not flex, you flex, we all flex our biceps. What's going on, beaches, bushes, buses, hustles, and you old hoes? It's your boy Papa Swoley O back with the Daily a Swole, the Daily Swole, Everston K2 flexing on you. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. Happy hump day, beaches. Happy, happy hump day, episode 12, hundo, and seven to shnan. Seven to shnan, shiggity shwan, seven to shnan. What's good? What's good? We made it. Everyone's here. Yeah, swole text. Where's my swole text fam at? Now, for those of you that have been living under a rock and maybe not catching the latest episodes, swole text is for unlimited members of Solnormous X. You get access to, well, you get access to me and I'm sending you text messages right to your phone. So inspiration, get off your fucking ass, go to the gym. I just sent out a blast um, to everyone letting you know that I was going live. So super cool. You know exactly when I'm going live and we'll see. Maybe we'll do that on the reg. We'll do it on the reg. I'll be like, yo, I'm going live. B, make sure you follow me. And join the sleazy sleaze. <laughs> I'm exciting. I love soul text. So welcome, Julie. Welcome, Josh. What's going on, Yolanda? How we doing? How we doing? Anyone else get stabbed over nasty KFC today? I don't think so, Nicholas. I don't think so. I don't think anyone got stabbed today. I think that was only um, only a one-time occurrence. I hope. If that's a regular fucking thing, if that's a regular thing that starts happening often and people just start getting stabbed more often, we have a major problem. I swear that's how the that's how the zombie apocalypse is going to start. You're just going to see people getting stabbed everywhere for fucking chicken sandwiches. I cannot imagine. Can you imagine living your whole life and having your whole life ahead of you and being 28 years old and you were killed for cutting in line for a chicken sandwich? Holy shit. And then I read yesterday that the guy was still at large. They didn't find him. They haven't found him yet. Or maybe they did, but they didn't know they they didn't have him in custody. So the guy fucking got away. He was still at large. My God, my God, (laughs) Fucking on the lamb, on the lamb, because he killed someone for Popeye's. What a shitty thing. That guy's going to get raped in prison for sure. Hey man, you fucking killed someone for cutting in line. You stupid mother (laughs) chicken sandwich. Oh my goodness. Uh, damn, I was just about to go make food. Don't, don't let me keep you from getting food. Actually. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. 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 You know what? You know what? Yeah. Don't, don't go get food. Stay here with daddy. Stay here with Papa. You can make it. You can, you can, you can stay here. You can stay here. Love the swole text. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. How many of you also came here from swole text hockey? You got your swole text. Good shit. Citrine. I totally rage this morning. I totally did. I totally did. Did everyone catch the driving while gaining? Driving while gaining. I fucking raged. I raged. Well, it wasn't this morning. I didn't rage this morning. I raged yesterday. But you got the video this morning. Ooh, that was violent. That was aggressive. So that's the latest video on the Swolnormous channel, Drive Mall Gaining, Man Killed by Chicken Sandwich. So it was inspired by it was inspired by the current events. Inspired by the current events, inspired by the, uh, inspired by the current events that we've been, that we've been dealing with or exposed to, uh, tomorrow, just a reminder tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, not tomorrow, not tomorrow. Uh, let me just bring this up on the screen. Let's see here. Friday, November 8th at 12 PM Eastern time. So this is for, uh, Swolnormous X members. This is for uncensored and unlimited. We have our private ask Papa Solio live in the Facebook group. So for those of you that are members Friday, November 8th, this will be posted, uh, shortly after this podcast. So you heard it here first ask Papa Solio live will be going live, um, in the private Facebook group Friday at 12 noon Eastern time, 12 PM, 12 noon. So for those of you that are uncensored members, for those of you that are unlimited members, you get access to this and I will see you there. So if you want to join, go to swornormousx.com and you can choose any membership option and you'll get access to the private group and you'll be access accessing the Ask Papa Solio lives and the weekly accountability meetings and all that good stuff. So don't forget this uh, Friday, 12 noon, make sure you mark it in your calendars. And of course the event will be posted shortly after this in the private Facebook group. So you will 
have that available. So Friday at 12, I will see everyone for the APS live. And uh, yeah, and that, and that, and that's that. That's that. That's all I got to say. Bye everyone. Thanks for joining. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Been a minute since I've caught a live swole. Nothing is as good as catching a live swole. Got my text. Thanks, James. James and James. James Franco. Is James Franco really watching my podcast? Hey, James. I love your, I love your movies, James Franco. <laughs> Everyone's like, James Franco's here? Well, not the, well, the real James Franco. We got more than one, apparently. That'd be awesome if James, like the actor, James Franco was watching the, <laughs> was watching the podcast. Finally catching a live thanks to Swole Text. Ooh, all right. Swole Text. Everyone's here from Swole Text. Fuck yeah. What up? What up? Let's see. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Thanks for the heads up, Papa. You're welcome. Uh, he's going to get the cock meat sandwich in prison. Damn straight he will. Damn straight he will. So uh, we have um, a couple new videos. A couple new videos that have been posted. And also, uh, you know, a couple comments that really brought this subject up about program design and how often you should be changing your program. I posted on TikTok today about uh, how fast you should be losing body fat. And I got some comments and some responses from that. And on Instagram, uh, I've been getting some DMs about program design. You know, how often should I switch things up, hitting plateaus, such a common topic, such a common topic, such a common topic to discuss plateaus. And a lot of times plateaus aren't really plateaus. People just aren't patient enough. People just don't like to wait. They just want constant progress. And it's really hard to get this point across because everyone wants fast results. Everyone wants instant results and everyone wants like results that go linear, but results don't happen just because you're going to the gym. You don't just deserve results. You have to force the results, you know? You have to force results. You have to absolutely force results. That's what results are. It's an adaptation. It's an adaptation, okay? Adaptation is what the response is to stress. And adaptation is the response to chronic stress. And what I mean by chronic stress, I mean external stress, external stressors, a stress response. So for example, if you overload your body with weights or with cardio, or with yoga regularly, your body will adapt over time. That's what will happen over time. Your body will adapt. You'll get more mobile. Let's say with yoga, you get more flexible. You have more range of motion. You will get stronger. You will build more endurance uh, if you're doing endurance type training. So your body will adapt over time. It won't happen from one workout, which is why if you go to the gym and do a workout, you're not going to be, wow, I'm huge the next day. What are you going to feel the next day? fucking sore, especially if it's your first workout, you're going to feel jacked up. You're going to feel absolutely beat to shit. So you're going to be sore. That's an, or that's a reaction, but that's not an adaptation. If you expose your body progressively building up with resistance, building up with volume slowly over time, which is why you want to have a program that ramps you up properly and teaches you the proper basics, the movement, um, you know, st stabilization exercises, you do your yoga, your correcting imbalances and correcting your posture. Once you do that over time, your body will build those adaptations to that stress. So you'll build muscle, you'll look bigger, you'll have more endurance, you'll have more strength, you know, all, the, all those types of things. So it doesn't happen overnight. But just the fact that you're going to the gym and doing it regularly doesn't mean that you're always going to see consistent progress. So we have this assumption that, oh, I'm going to the gym, I have a membership, or I'm doing a program that I will constantly see progress. And there's also this misconception that if you don't see progress all the time, that you're doing something wrong. So it's kind of like this tug of war between when do I cut my losses? When do I change my program? And that's okay. If you have a plateau and you really have a plateau to change your program. But what I want to discuss is how dramatically and how drastically should you change your program and what should your program be reflecting? And here's where it comes down to enjoyment versus doing the fucking shit that you need to do. And this is where discipline and consistency comes in. This is where accountability comes in. This is where a lot of people get it wrong. A lot of people, a lot of people are trying to do something and train in a way that they enjoy. And there isn't anything wrong with it. However, fitness, exercise should not be fun. And what I mean by should not be fun, it's what I mean by that is that should not be 
the defining factor of your training. You can enjoy it. I absolutely want you to enjoy it. I absolutely hope you enjoy it. I think you should enjoy it, but I think you should enjoy taking stock in your body. I think you should enjoy investing your efforts in your body in a manner in which it will improve your body and improve your health. So entertainment, albeit that would be nice, that's not the determining factor for whether or not a program will work. It can be a component because if you like something that you're doing, you're more likely to be consistent with it. However, if you don't like something, it doesn't mean that it won't work. If you don't like something, it could still work really well. You just don't like doing it. In which case I say, well, fucking pick it. Like decide. You don't like to do a certain style of training, but you want the results that would come from that style of training. Either suck it up buttercup or fucking do something else and be satisfied with not getting those results. Again, if you're trying to get leaner and get shredded and build muscle and have a physique, you need to lift weights. I don't like lifting weights. Hmm? Then you're not going to get those results and you have to be satisfied with not getting those results. Then you can go do some other form of activity. Just remember that your body will adapt to the stress that you put it under. If you're doing a lot of cardio, your body's not going to build a lot of muscle. You're, right? you're going to plateau pretty fucking hard and you might not get the results that you want. So it depends on what you want to happen and then doing what you need to do to make that happen. And that's usually where people diverge and people get it wrong. They try to go after entertainment. Oh, this is fun. This is stimulating. It doesn't have to be. That's, that's irrelevant. It doesn't have to be stimulating. It needs to work. And that can help. They're, that's like a Venn diagram. It can cross over, but it doesn't necessarily have to. Okay? So, that being said, that being said, how much people change their workout programs is atrocious and how random and how random people exercise is also atrocious because it takes people far off from their, their, um, their goals oftentimes. And the amount of variety that you need is often very, very overestimated. You can get a ton of variety with the same exercises without change, you, you don't need to change everything is my point. Most people, when they start doing some type of variety or they start mixing it up and they think, hey, they start, they start recanting muscle confusion. They start using that and throwing it around as if it fucking means anything. They start using, uh, you know, just, just the t term mixing it up, plateaus. People throw around these program design principles and these programming principles and the exercise physio physiology principles without truly understanding what they mean. Your body will adapt if you constantly expose it to a stress. If you're changing it too often, your body won't adapt well because it doesn't know what to adapt to. And if you think your body gets used to something after a couple days or after a week, you couldn't be further from the fucking truth. It takes a while for your body to fully adapt to a new stress or a new stimulus, which means you don't have to change things that much or that often, especially if you're trying to build muscle. And that's usually what I'm talking about because a lot of people try to shy away from building muscle where I think that's where most people need to go. Most people need to train to build muscle because it'll help you metabolize fat. It'll help you lean out more over time. It'll build bone density. It'll build your functional strength and it'll build your, just your ability to do things, your activities of daily living easier and better. And you can build that physique. You'll get the aesthetics that you want. You'll build the booty. You'll get the chest. You'll get the biceps. You know, you'll get the legs. You'll get the body that you want. You'll also make it easier for you to metabolize fast and to lean out. You'll fit better in clothes and, and so forth. So you'll get a lot of the things that it'll, cross, it'll check off a lot of those boxes that people want. A lot of people say they want to build strength. Okay. People want to look, you want to look better. Get the fuck out of here. Very few people are just extra. I'm just exercising for my health. I, I think that should be the foundation, but you're lying. You're, 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 you're straight up fucking lying to yourself. If you're not doing it for the way you look, I do it for the way I look and you do it for the way you look. Health is like, we treat health as like the bonus, even though we have to come at it from that standpoint. But we all really, you know, that, that's what we see in the short term. That's what we look at in the mirror. We see, oh, we look good and we feel good. We want the health and we should focus on the health and that should really be the foundation. But we all want to look good. We all want to look good naked. We all want to feel good. Don't 
pretend like you don't. It's not even worth it. It's just, you do want to look good. I want to look, there's nothing wrong with wanting to look good because you look good for yourself and you look good for other people and you feel attractive to other people and other people are attracted to you. And that's just, come on, it's fucking sex and you have babies. That's the only reason why we're here on this earth. Let's not, pre- let's not pretend like, oh, we're all here to, we're, we're, we're here to fucking make babies and then die. That's really all it is. Okay. So trying to complicate it and try to make it seem like there's any other real reason for exercising. Yes, it's good to be healthy. And yes, we should focus on that and longevity and all those things, which is why yoga, meditation, all those things help us do this stuff for longer. But don't try to pretend like you're not doing it for your looks too. You're doing it for all of it, which is fine. Okay. Now, when it comes to your training and mixing it up, you don't have to train random all the time. You don't have to mix it up all the time. You can stick to a program longer than four weeks. You can stick to a program for eight weeks. You can stick to a program for 12 weeks. You can change up your program and you can add that kind of variety by just swapping out an exercise the following week. One exercise, you can swap out flat bench for an incline bench. You can swap out uh, lunges for Romanian deadlifts. You can swap out one exercise and that would be variety. That would be mixing up your routine. Although, because we're so used to getting eye fucked by a billion posts on Instagram and a ton of YouTube content and everything just flash, boom, 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 boom. We think that we have to do a lot more. We're not satisfied with the difference or the change unless it looks drastically different because we essentially have ADD with all the social media. We have ADD with our phones. So whenever it's not extreme change, it doesn't even register on our scale which leads people to doing way too much, too many things like CrossFit and just doing random shit all the fucking time and doing 50 fucking power cleans, then running for two miles on pavement, you know, and then coming back and doing a million fucking burpees and just random shit like that to feel exhausted. And then we start getting these group exercise classes that just keep on trying to one up the ne- the previous class and one up and make it more challenging and more insane, which is why things like the CrossFit games just gets more and more fucking ludicrous and stupid and reckless every year because they have to make it more interesting. So you're seeing how they just keep on progressing it until people just start breaking themselves. Remember, whether it was it this past year with the cycling or the biking and people were just fucking getting destroyed? It was stupid. They're just trying to make it more challenging so it attracts viewers and it just feels harder. That's all it is. It's just to make it more difficult, which is at the expense of actually proper training, okay? And that's what a lot of people do in the gym. They they do things that are cerebrally stimulating at the expense of what will actually get you results and what will keep you healthy in the long term. I am here to tell you that if you get hurt, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter what your program is. If you're hurt, you can't do shit. It doesn't matter if you get hurt. So in your programming, no matter what you're adjusting, no matter what you're tweaking, you need to make sure your programming is keeping you safe. You need to make sure you are recovering enough. You need to make sure it's keeping you healthy and it's keeping you not injured. Understand? You don't have to do random shit until you just fucking break yourself. Just because it's something different doesn't mean it's good. Just because it's something new doesn't mean you need to do it. Just because there are 50 different chest exercises doesn't mean you have to do all 50 in a three-week cycle. You don't have to do everything that exists all the time. What most people don't do, which is the reason why most people don't get results, is most people don't keep it basic enough. And most people don't milk the basics. Milk the basics. Milk the Milk, milk, squeeze the basics dry. We all know what the basics are, right? A chest exercise, some kind of chest pushing movement, some type of horizontal adduction movement. And then you have back exercises. You got the pull-ups, you got the rows. And then you have a couple different things. You have T-bar rows and cable rows. You get, there, there's so many different options to pull from different angles with different bands and with different... Ca- That's really not the important thing. It's like, all right, there's a billion different ways and things you can pull. You can pull from this angle, from that angle, from that angle. You could be with a band, with a chain, with a rope, with a blah, blah, blah. And those are all the little variables that provide you a little bit of a different stress. As long as you're working the muscles in line with how the muscle works, you're going to activate that muscle. You're going to work that muscle. You're going to be contracting and stretching. You're going to be eccentric, isometric, concentric actions of that muscle. 
Now, progressively overloading them properly is important and doing the, doing so safely. So the basics work. The basics need to be done a lot more. Whenever you're not getting results, it really needs to come down to, okay, you're not, you're missing a base. You're missing, missing a basic principle. You're missing a basic principle. You're missing the fundamental nutrition. You're missing, you're missing the fundamental sleep. You're missing the fundamental recovery. Because if you're not getting results, it's usually not because of, hey, I didn't throw in this new angle. It's because you're, you don't have the foundation locked down. And I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to the people that are maybe more expert level or very advanced, but it's always good to come back to the basics. I see people that are beginners that are jumping on the supplement train right away. I see people that are beginners that are jumping on these fancy exercises because they see them on Instagram. I see people doing curls. Again, one of my most hated fucking exercises I see people doing just stupid shit. People lying down on their back with a cable machine curling, lying down on their back. What the fuck are you doing? Cable curls, pulling, you know, curling like this. Are you getting on stage at the Olympia competition? Are you trying to work on your finishing biceps peak? You have nothing to peak. There's no biceps meat there to even get a peak. Like, why are you doing any kind of cable curls? Go fucking lift some shit. Pick up the bar and curl the fuck out of it. Like, that's it. The fucking basics work. And usually that comes down to people not squeezing their muscles properly. They're not actually having good form. They don't have a good mind-muscle connection. They're not eating right. They're not as relentless with their caloric intakes. And they're not building muscle. They're not recovering properly. And also, they haven't been training long enough. I've been training for 20 years. It's not constant progress. I haven't been trying to I've been trying to bulk for 20 years. Could I be bigger? Sure, but I have been training for 20 years. I've been hardening, I've been cutting, I've been building, I've been mobilizing, I've been doing different styles of training, but I've been in the gym training hard and training consistently for 20 years. I've rarely taken more than maybe a week off or two weeks of like deloading in the entire 20 year period. Seriously, I've never really taken a huge period off. I've always been doing active recovery, if anything. It's a long journey and it's a long process. And guess what? I'm just getting started. There's 60, 70, 80 more years to add to that number. So what are you doing to keep yourself consistent? If you're getting hurt, doesn't matter what it is. If you get hurt, you can't do shit. And there's a reason why there's the basic lifts. And Phil just mentioned this in the comments, squat, bench, deadlift, build around those. They fucking work for a reason. The basics work and it works for a reason. The reason why we have these fundamental lifts is because they fucking work. And if you have pain or difficulty doing any of those, you need to fix the problem. If you have, oh, but it hurts when I squat, you got to figure out what the fuck is going on that hurts when you squat. It shouldn't hurt when you fucking stand up. That means it's going to hurt when you stand up out of a chair. You're going to be jacked up when you're 50 fucking years old. If you have pain when you stand up, there's a huge problem. And one of the issues with social media is everyone's trying to get attention. Everyone wants to one up the next thing, just like those group exercise workouts I was telling you before, right? People's trying, everyone's trying to, all these gyms want to keep you paying those hundreds of dollars every month. So you keep on coming back. You keep on coming back for membership. You keep on coming back for more. And when you're trying to one up and one up and one up and one up, things are going to break eventually. Eventually something's going to fucking snap and you don't have to keep on one upping. You need to focus on the basics. You need to focus on the basics and be relentless. And it's not always going to be interesting. It's not always going to be sexy. It's not always going to be, wow, this was so stimulating. I'll tell you what's stimulating, getting fucking results. I'll tell you what, going to the gym and training and doing the shit that you should be doing to get results, it's fucking great. I've been so consistent with my training. I don't do fancy fucking stuff in the gym. What do you need to do in the gym? You need to overload your muscles and then get out. That's it. Overload the muscles and get the fuck out. Overload the muscles and get the fuck out. You don't need to beat them into submission. You don't need to destroy yourself with overload. Depends on what your goal is, but unless you're going to be a pro bodybuilder, don't overload your body. Unless you're taking tons of fucking anabolic steroids, don't destroy your body. Don't destroy your body. And I'm talking from experience. Man, I used to do so much volume. I don't do the same volume anymore. And I'm fine with downsizing my muscle mass at this point. I am because when you're overloading yourself, there is a point where you have breaks. There is a limit to how much strength, how much muscle and how much, I guess, successful recovery you can have before things start going downhill. And even if you do everything right, or you try to do the best you can, like I do, I try to do the best I can. I'm not perfect, but I still get, you know, kind of like 
you get, you get aches or you get a little inflammation now and again, or like a little knee pain, it happens. But those are signals you have to address. And like, okay, why do I have knee pain? Maybe I've been sitting too much. Let me do some more mobility. Let me focus more on yoga. It's about longevity because the number one thing that's going to hold you back from getting progress, the number one thing that's going to hold you back from getting progress is getting hurt, is not training, is not being able to put in the work. And most people are trying to mix things up and overload their bodies to the point where they fucking break. And then guess what? You're not doing shit. Then you're getting nothing. Then you're putting no work in because you can't put work in because you're fucking broken. Why be broken? Train to be healthier. Train to be fit. Train to be good. Don't train to crush yourself. Don't train to destroy yourself. We're going to see a lot. (laughs) We're going to see a lot of fucking banged up fucking people in the next 20, 30 years from all this group exercise nonsense. People are going to be destroyed when they're older. People are going to be absolutely banged the fuck up. And, um, you know, I mean, you have to focus on what's right for you and what one person is doing for their results might not be something that you should do. You have to customize, you have to individualize. And it happens that way with nutrition happens that way with training. It's very easy to see, Hey, that person's got great results. Let me do their program. Well, are you going to do everything else in addition to that program? Are you going to obsess over your training the way that person does? Are you going to eat the way that person does? Are you going to sleep the way that person does? Or are you just taking out out of context that program or that workout and doing it your way with all of your shitty foundational things and you're going to break yourself. Most people don't see beyond the surface. You see someone doing a cool workout. Oh, that's a cool exercise. You know nothing about that person. You know nothing about how much work they've put in. You know nothing about their muscle capacity and their mobility. You go and try, you hurt yourself. Yeah, why were you fucking doing that? It's like copying what an Olympic athlete does. Get the fuck out of here. You're not an Olympic athlete. Why are you copying that shit? Why are you copying what elite people do and not downsizing it and not taking it in your own context and digesting it and creating something? Because most people don't know how to do that. And that's what proper program design is. Proper recovery, proper training, progression, but also patience. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen overnight. What's up, Christine? Hell yeah, you got a swole text. Fuck yeah, you did. Fuck yeah, you did. Make sure also that you turn on your YouTube notifications and you customize them. Make sure you turn it to always on. When you hit that bell, make sure you customize those bell notifications. Mm -mm -mm. Can you train when you are sick? Why would you? You're sick. Get better. Heal. Cerny, hey, I've been lifting the same way I did in the 80s. Just the basics because it works. I'm 63 and you're fucking, there you go. The basics work. Damn straight they do. Uh, let's see. Sounds like a really dumb way to die. Who's dying? A gym I was at a few years ago thought almost every exercise would be made better by doing on something wobbly. Well, that's what happens with Instagram. That's what happens with all these posts when you have when you can take like a little snippet, a one minute thing and post it on and people everyone's trying to do the most outlandish thing. Everyone's trying to do the most ridiculous thing so they can get more views. And the wobbly shit, fuck a Bosu ball. If I had a dime for everyone that used a BOSU ball incorrectly, I'd be a fucking trillionaire. BOSU balls are only used, I would only use a BOSU ball for like maybe, I can fucking count the exercise or the movements on one hand. For me personally, I would almost next to never use a BOSU ball. I don't. I don't. A BOSU ball is more or less a gimmick for trainers to give their clients the illusion that they're working harder where they're actually weakening their joints and weakening their ability to stabilize the joints. Anytime you see someone wobbling like crazy, anytime you see someone doing like on a ball or something and they're shaking on the way down and they look like they don't have real control, they might not be falling over, but they're wobbling and their joints are going everywhere. They're not training properly. Okay. They're not training properly because if you're in an environment that's too unstable You're not training your body for more stability. You are actually training the joints to be unstable. You want the joint to have control. So you need to make it less unstable and then progress from there. And most people, because they don't have that kind of stability, because they just can't handle that kind of um, wobbly surface, that unstable surface, what do they do? They get on a BOSU ball and they squat really fast. Worthless. If you're doing stabilization and you're moving fast, you're doing it wrong. Stabilization exercises are not done fast. You're not hitting the right muscles. You're not hitting, you're not producing enough time under tension to activate those stabilizer muscles. You're using the fast twitch, larger muscle groups, and you're wasting your time. You're using momentum 
and you're using that vector force and that velocity of just moving fast to kind of supersede and kind of over overshadow and skip essentially the balance portion. So you go really fast and you look real, oh wow, you're going up and down, you're squatting on a BOSU ball. When you're going up, down, up, down, wasting your time, complete waste of fucking time. Any kind of stabilization that's done fast is pretty much a waste of time. If you're doing something fast and you're sticking a landing, you're doing some like reactive training, you're doing some power training, some plyo training, you can still move fast and explosive and power, but then you have to land, lock it down and stabilize. You need to actually be able to control that position and control your body in space. Oh God, and the impact? Yeah, the impact exercise, people are jumping and doing explosive stuff. You have to think when we talk about program design and training, fuck, when when we talk about program design and training and where people are starting from, people are starting from these banged up positions. People are starting from tight hips, tight ankles, thoracic spines that are completely locked, shoulder joints that are fucking immobilized, necks that are extended. People are completely out of place to begin with. Their static and dynamic posture is shit. And then you have someone jumping around on it. It's a recipe for disaster. You see people's knees bending in. Oh, it's an ACL tear or meniscus just waiting to happen. People have a lot of imbalances. And that's why when someone's new, I say, man, one of the best things to do for those of you that join Swolnormous X, that come into Swolnormous X, if you're not ready to start the 90 day dash or one of our programs, you start with the yoga studio, start with the Swolga classes, the Swollen Seven, start with the yoga studio. Yoga is one of the best things to do to start with your fitness. You get your nutrition in order. You start focusing on your lifestyle habits, on recovery, on hydration. You get that kind of stuff in order and you practice yoga. You get that body control and you work on those stabilizers. It's fantastic. I'm doing yoga today. Today's a yoga day for me. I'm downsizing my resistance training. I'm doing resistance three or four days a week. I'm doing yoga three days a week. I'm trying to bias my training more towards yoga and mobility because that's what's going to keep me healthier longer. I'm not crushing my body until the fucking day I die. There's a limit to how much your body can take. There's a limit to how much your body needs over the course of your life. And it becomes a point of diminishing return. You still train hard, but the volume should go down. The volume should be, you know, appropriate. You can still train hard. And what I, what I mean by that is not that you train less and you allow yourself to decline, but you temper your aggression with overload. I'm not trying to max out my deadlifts anymore. I'm not trying to max out for squats. I go according to how I feel and I push myself, but I temper my volume because I will tend to overdo it and then be fucking sore because that's how I got big. That's how I built my physique. I just pushed it and I was very able to take off the governor and flip the switch and just push myself past when my brain was like, no, you have to stop. I'm like, fuck you or keep on going. And that can cause a lot of trauma and cause a lot of growth and stimulate a lot of growth. But as you get older and you have that war, that wear and tear compounding and building over time, eventually there's that point where it's like, you know, diminishing returns. Things break after a while. Phil, loving the yoga stuff. Second try, I got my floor bow with both feet. There you go. Nice. Several years back into training and have yet to use a BOSU ball. Good man. You don't need one. They, look, it's a tool and it could be used properly for sure. It could be used for a purpose, but you don't need one. You don't need one. You don't have to. The yoga studio in Swinormous X is amazing. Thank you, Silver's Beats. Thank you. New, new classes every week. New classes. You tried the new one? How many of you tried the new class? Christine, I've started really enjoying yoga and the mobility workouts currently on day three of the 90 day dash. Awesome. Phil, just wait. It gets better. Damn straight. It does. Damn straight. It does. Tried hip swolga a few nights ago and wow, (laughs) I'm glad you enjoyed it. So for those of you that are just tuning in now, a reminder for those of you that are members of Solnormous X Uncensored and Unlimited, we have the Ask Papa Solio live Friday at noon. So um, that will be posted shortly after this podcast in the group. So I didn't announce the event yet. So you hear it here first, heard it here first. Um, what I say? Like hear it here, hear it here. Instead of heard it here, I'm gonna be like, you heard it here first. Friday, 12 noon Eastern time. So if you want to learn more, you want to join, you want to hook up again, memberships as low as $2.99. $2.99 uncensored. You can get access to all this live content exclusive for members. Ask Papa Solio live Friday, 12 noon Eastern time, 12 noon, 12.
12. Noon. Friday. Viernes. Rest day today, but doing yoga later. I never knew what a BOSU ball was until I saw the gym bronies on Instagram. Well, it's, it's a tool. Like anything else in the gym, even if it's a dumbbell, even if it's a barbell, even if it's a band, it's just a tool for you to get shit done. It's a tool that you can use in the gym. And it's not bad in itself, but people tend to use a gimmick. And you'll see those trainers that are like the BOSU ball trainers. They go into the corner with their client with a couple dumbbells and a BOSU ball, and they just train them for an hour with a fucking BOSU ball. It's like, oh my God, get them lifting some fucking weights. Get them lifting some fucking weights. It's usually what it reminds me of. There's BOSU, there are BOSU ball trainers. There are people that cannot train a client without tons of, oops. There are people that cannot train their client without tons of gadgets. And again, just like group exercise classes and gyms that have that, that are founded upon group exercise, they need to stimulate clients brains. They need to make it seem like they're doing different stuff. And oftentimes change and these exciting quote unquote exercises are at the expense of what will really maximize results for the client. It's to keep them, it's to keep them like psychologically, Ooh, this is different. Oh, this is really hard. Oh, this is challenging. But is it really the best thing for them to do? And that's what really bothers me about the personal training and the fitness industry is a lot of it is just, Hey, what's interesting. What's, what's flashy. What's exciting. Oh, what looks good. Well, fuck what looks good. What works, what works. And it's not sexy to talk about fucking hard work and Hey, you have to train for years and you have to lift these things and do this and eat a certain way. It's like, okay. And when I say eat a certain way, I mean, I'm eating delicious food. I I don't restrict myself at all. You can follow my stories. You follow what I post. I don't restrict myself at all. Boom. Big fucking grass fed ribeye steak. What's, what am I restricting myself for? Butter and fucking Celtic sea salt over it. And it's fucking delicious. And I feel amazing. And I'm lean as hell and I feel strong as shit and I have energy and I feel great. So I figured out what foods work best for me and how I like to consume them. I don't feel, I don't need a cheat meal when I love the food that I eat and I feel satisfied and I get great results. What cheat meal do I need? Tell me how I need to cheat. I don't need to cheat. My food is a cheat. It just feels, it's fucking amazing. My food is so good and I love my fuel. I don't need to cheat. My meals and the food that I eat is what I want to eat. So that's how it works out. It's a tool like most who use it. Savage. That was Savage, Zachary. Very good. That was a good one. That was a good one. You can achieve stabilization with yoga. No need to take. Of course you can. And that's what most people need to do. Most people need to stabilize themselves on. Most people need to stabilize themselves on the actual ground. You see people on a BOSU ball shaking. What are you trained to be in a fucking earthquake? (laughs) No earthquake. You need to train for life. Train to stand on the ground. Go on one leg. Do stuff on one leg on the ground. That's plenty for everyone. If you could stand on one leg on the ground, cool. Progress that. Do different exercises like that. Challenge yourself. You don't need more unstable shit. The ground is plenty. Trust me. You haven't even begin to begun to scratch the surface of training on the ground. Believe it. Believe it. Oftentimes that's the case. Pete got to complicate it so that people feel like they need a trainer. Yeah. That's one of the downsides is that the trainer needs to keep business, but to the trainers, um, you know, in support of personal trainers, well, I, I'm not against personal trainers, but when it comes to personal training, they need to keep their business but it's also a tough position when you're a personal trainer because you are at the, you are, you're a victim. I don't want to say victim. I hate that word, but you are a victim to what the client does outside the gym. So we've talked about this many times. If you have a personal trainer or you are a trainer, you have a client three days a week for an hour. You have them for three hours out of the week. They are out of your jurisdiction for 165 other hours. So if you do the math, that's like a, that's like 1.8 or something percent. That's less than 2% of the week that they are actually with you yet. You are the one that's going to be held responsible. I was try training with so-and-so and and I didn't get results. It's because 98% of the time you're a fat, lazy fuck. And that's why you didn't get results. It's not Jeanette's fault for training you hard three hours out of the week. It's because you ate pizza and stayed up late and drank alcohol all the other days. I'm exaggerating, but that's what happens. 
you're only with your client a few hours out of the week. So you need to make it stimulating. You make it, need to make it work. You need to try to make a difference. And it's really hard when you don't have control over what they do when you're not uh, with them. People have asked if I get tired of eating the same things and it's a resounding no since I love what I eat. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. And when you do an elimination diet and you figure out which foods your body really responds well to, oh, it's a game changer. It's a game changer because then you don't have to worry about cheating. You just don't want other food. You want your fuel. You want to fuel up, power up, and then fucking go on your go on your day. That's it. That's what you want. Oh, yeah, Paul. Paul, too tall. It's those funny looking vibration plates that sit in the corner of the gym. I think we got two of them upstairs at the gym that I train at. Those vibration plates, fucking joke. They're a waste. It's like they're expensive as shit. Zzz, just feels weird. You know, but it doesn't mean that these things don't work like in a scientific controlled study. Oh, this showed, look, they're not really useful for many things, but some of these things have applications, but maybe for geriatric populations, maybe for people that are in rehabilitation, because if you're rehabbing a shoulder or something and your arms are on this and you're shaking, it can cause, you know, maybe it can activate, but whatever. But I mean, for the average person, you don't need that shit. But then you these gyms or these trainers or on Instagram makes you feel like you need that stuff. And all the, all the, the only thing that's happening online is it's trying to sell you and promote things that you don't need. Like we know what works for training. We know what gets people leaner. We know what builds muscle. We know that we know now it's all up to the marketing for people that are trying to promote some new thing and some new gimmick and some new handle or some new contraption. Oh, you can travel with this. You can travel with this. Or you can go for a walk and do push-ups and pull-ups and lunges and stuff with your body weight. You don't need a fancy contraption. Bring some bands and do the basics or do some yoga. You don't need anything. You don't need anything shocking and fucking we're not, we don't need to create new types of exercise. We know how the body moves. You know, now it's just more gimmicks. It's more gimmicky. Uh, you know, you know, you know, we got a lot of, we got a lot of, uh, Swanormous X members in the, in the audience today. All y'all, we're all talking Swolga. Swolga, gravity's your favorite. We'll put up some, I'll get, I'll get a new class up there. I haven't had a chance to, uh, we're redoing the, the porch for filming. So, um, that's kind of like under construction. So it's kind of a, a hot mess out there. So is the evolved version of the shake weight. Yeah, nice. The shake weights. Well, there's certain things like, I'm sure for certain situations, a shake weight could be beneficial, but come on. You know, what do you need to do to get the results you want? A lot of it's not fancy shit. A lot of it's not fancy shit. Hi, Swole Holio. I am alive doing sets of 20 with perfect form. Nice. You're alive. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad you're alive. I'd be concerned if a corpse was texting or was commenting on the on the video. Rest day today, so six mile walk and yoga. Thanks to your advice, love it. Thanks, Papa. You're welcome, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman six six six. All right. Yeah. So, what are you training today? What are you training today? A lot of you are doing swolga. A lot of you are doing yoga. I like your gym. It looks like it's almost empty all the time. It's hard to find that. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a small. I go to a smaller studio. You don't get, all, there's, you don't get like the meatheads. I mean, look, I love, I'm only saying meatheads because you guys know what I'm talking about, but I love like the energy of powerlifting gyms and streams where like, there's chalk everywhere and fucking hardcore and music. But when it's really close to where I am and it's quiet, I can film. It's like, it's fine. It's perfect for what I need. I don't need, because when you go in those environments, sometimes you're tempted to do shit and push yourself, uh, to a limit that's not really something that you should be doing. You have to know yourself. You have to know yourself and how you train and what's optimal for you, you know? And that's where I am in my career. I'm young still, but I just, I'm looking ahead in the future. I know what getting injured leads to. I know what overdoing it leads to. I see it all the time. I see people that lift heavy in their forties and fifties and yeah, they might be lifting heavy, but they have guts and their back has all these problems and they're still fucking trying to deadlift 400, 500 pounds. Like what the fuck are you doing? Why are you putting four plates on the bar and trying to squat that when you're 50 years? It's like, fucking stop. You're going to crack something. People holding on to their youth, people holding on to that ego. And that's what's, that's a big problem in the gym is getting rid of that ego. That's what's, again, it's good for meditation. Meditation is great. 
helps you release that shit. But I never had an ego in the gym, which is why I've been consistent and have only had minimal minor injuries with all the volume and all the training I've done. I've been very, very healthy for the majority of my career, which is important because if you're in good condition and you're healthy and you're not injured, you can train. And if you are injured, you can't train. So err on the side of caution and train smart. Train fucking smart. Train smart. So a reminder, one more time, Friday at 12 noon, let's see, November 8th, Friday, November 8th, two days, day after tomorrow, Ask Papa Swole, you live for Swolenormous X members. It'll be streamed live in the private Facebook group. Of course, if you can't catch it live, it will be uploaded into Swolenormous X and it'll be available in your library. However, catch me live and you can get access to myself and I'll answer all the questions. And of course, in the private community, um, I get to every single question, absolutely every single question. So Friday, 12 noon Eastern time for Swolenormous X members, unlimited and uncensored. I will be going live. If you want to learn more, head on over to swolenormousx.com and you can get started for as little as $2.99 with the uncensored membership, which is fucking amazing. So I highly recommend it. And for those of you in swole text, I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad you liked the little notification. So you'll be hearing more from daddy and I'll see everyone else tomorrow for episode 1280 of the Daily Mother Swole, the most muscular swole cast, beard cast, broad cast, gain cast, man cast, pimp cast, sleeves cast, and slay cast in the realm because when I flex, you flex, we all flex our biceps. See you tomorrow for 1280. Peace, McGeese. Deuce, McGoose. Yeah, boy. Papa Swole. Oh, 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 oh. Out. Bye-bye. Peace.